Sharon Burr. Well, David is here now with more from the trust that's unfolded today. But the point was, surely, that the culture of the NHS was meant to have been sorted out and a proper system put in place, a kind of national whistleblowing system. Indeed, it seems quite depressing to say it seems we've been here many times before. You'll remember in 2013, after that appalling scandal at mid-staffs, um, where hundreds of patients died in appalling conditions and shocking neglect, we were told that the whole architecture for whistleblowing had been updated, overhauled in the NHS, and people were going to be encouraged to come forward, no recriminations. But skip forward to another report, into another scandal, this time Telford Hospital Maternity Care, published just this year, the final report. And the report's author, Donna Ockenden, noted with regret that many of the people that she'd interviewed for her report, got evidence from insiders, asked at the last minute for that evidence to be withdrawn, taken out of the final report. Why? Because they feared, even though it was anonymous, that somehow they might be identified, and if they were, they feared recriminations. So for whistleblower campaigners, mm -hmm. in the decades since Midstaffs, they say not enough has changed in the NHS. Well, clearly, if you haven't got safety in speaking up, if you're going to your careers at risk or in the allegations on your report, you may find yourself re referred to the GMC for your professional uh, practice. Um, you know, your career is at stake. And sadly, for a lot of whistleblowers, um, whistleblowing has a very serious impact on them, on their careers, their families, their finances. Um, it can be a lifelong experience and we've got to change that because whistleblowers are so important. Getting people to speak up to stop harm, identifying risks early, you know, it's a really valuable tool for trusts and they've got to be listened to. So, you know, we heard from Liz Gardner there, she made reference to the GMC, but you've got news on the GMC. Yeah, in our report last night, we reported that at this trust, at University Hospitals Birmingham Trust, over the decade up until March this year, they referred 26 of their own doctors to the GMC for investigation. And of those, there were zero action taken. Not one of those doctors, any action was taken by the GMC. Now, the allegation, of course, was that this was being used as some way of trying to silence doctors, warn them that if you speak out, mm -hmm. then something might, bad might happen to you. So we went to the GMC today and said, how does that look? compared to a, the national UK picture. And that's what we got from them. There were, in a similar period, not quite the same period, 2,828 referrals by employers to the GMC in the same way uh -huh. that those 26 from Birmingham. But in this case, 33%, a third action so, was taken so against... So Birmingham was completely out of kilter. Well, it's very different. Zero is a lot different yeah. to a third. So what have you been hearing from uh, the Trust today? Well, the Trust told us um, that they take patient safety very seriously. They have a high reporting culture of incidents to ensure appropriate accountability and vitally learning. They went on to tell us all patient safety concerns and incidents are rigorously investigated to prevent harm to our patients. And this may be difficult, they said to some colleagues. They went on. There are established routes and support in place for individuals to raise concerns they may have that we promote and encourage. Now, in Frank Bird's case, the Trust told us they again extended their deepest sympathies to the family and were determined that the right lessons would be learned. David, thank you very much.